Hello and welcome to the demonstration video for version 1.0 of Smartscape, the decision support tool uh, for the Grassland 2.0 project. And I'm looking at landscape scale, watershed scale, scenarios of transformative change. Um, so I'm going to walk you through a demonstration of how you would go through this scenario generation process and then looking at some of the model outputs from our, our tool. And, um, and then hopefully you can be off on your own and creating your own scenarios uh, here in a little bit. So I'm gonna start here at our main uh, website for interacting and uh, connecting with these tools. So that's at scapetools.grasslandag.org. And if you visit that website for the first time, you'll notice that you'll have to log in with a user and a password. So if you don't have one, it's easy to set up. You can just click add new account or add new user. And all you need is an email address and you'll be up and running. And once you log in successfully, you'll see a similar uh, landing page where you can click on either Grayscape, our farm scale decision support tool or Smartscape. And there also will be uh, some resources available uh, for each uh, tool that we are currently still developing, uh, including this video. So let's go ahead and click on Smartscape and that will launch us into the app. So I'll just orient you a little bit here. First, um, we've got our main mapping window and this will look familiar to those uh, that have used Google Maps or, or Bing Maps. You can kind of zoom in and out um, and you, know, you see an aerial photo and some of the major highways and it'll kind of change as you zoom in a little bit closer. Um, the second thing you'll notice is uh, the, on the left-hand side, there's this panel and it'll kind of change as you work through the different steps of the scenario generation process. And we, we do have some text to kind of guide you along the way, um, these different props on the left. So if you get stuck, hopefully um, you'll get some useful information uh, on the left here to, to help you out. So the first thing we need to do is select what we call a work area. And on this map, you can see that there are these different uh, regions that we have uh, been working on. And these are our learning hubs um, as part of the Grassland 2.0 project. And for this demonstration, I'm gonna be clicking on our Clover Belt learning hub in the North Central part of the state. So by clicking on that, it zooms in and then uh, now we're seeing um, that region broken apart into all of its sub watersheds. And if you're familiar with the different watershed types, these are HUC 12 boundaries. And we're using this as kind of our common organizing unit for um, kind of choosing what area you would like to play around with in terms of these scenarios. So now we're, we are selecting um, one or multiple watersheds. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer and I'm gonna select this watershed here is the Fenwood Creek. So I'll click on that and it'll get highlighted. And then if I hold down control, I can actually, uh, or sorry, shift, I can actually click on multiple watersheds. So I'm gonna choose the one just to the north here. This is Scotch Creek watershed. And you can choose more than that, but for this demo, I'm just gonna stick with two. and now we are just going to be confined to playing around with different scenarios uh, in these two watersheds. So I'll next click on build scenario and that will open up a new set of options and you also see that loading um, screen and what's happening under the hood is we're loading in all of the necessary geospatial data layers that we need to run this model. So even before you run the model, it's kind of getting all set to go under the hood just to keep things as quick as possible. Um, so in order to set up a scenario, we first need to select the parts of the landscape that we want to change or transform. And that's what this next menu is for. And what we have right now in Smartscape is a focus on 
agricultural land. And so these are all the different agricultural land use types. Um, and this is taken from WISCLAN2, which is a data set that was developed a few years ago, but is still um, pretty representative of today's landscape. Um, for this demonstration, what I'm going to show is what if we converted um, the continuous corn and cash grain uh, systems to manage grazing. So I'm going to click on both of those. And you can see that different parts of the map will start to get highlighted that indicate that is where the continuous corn and these cash grain or corn bean rotations are located. Um, we do have some additional selection options, and I'm not going to play around with those uh, right now. I'm going to create this first scenario, and then we'll go back and explore some of those other options in more detail. But I'm going to go ahead and skip right to the assess scenario part. Um, after giving you a little bit more indication of how much land that uh, transformation that we've selected um, actually encompasses. So the total work area is gonna be about 55,000 acres. And what we've selected so far is just under 10,000 acres or about 18% of these two watersheds. Um, so the next part, you don't have to name your transformation. Certainly if it's just one, you don't really have to, but if you want to just reference it. Um, so this will be our corn and our beans. And we're gonna transform this to managed grazing. And we can set that transformation, uh, set the different options associated with it by clicking on this blue box and up pops another window. And we do default to a kind of a well-managed grazing system, but you can specify a number of different options for the type of land cover that you want to transform all those colored areas into. Um, so pasture, continuous corn, corn and grain, corn and beans, and then a couple of different dairy rotation options. Um, and then depending on which one you choose, you'll also get some additional management options um, that you can specify. So I'm going to leave this as a default right now and click on save. And we're just going to go ahead and assess the scenario. I'll go skip back to base assumptions here after we get through this first scenario. So by clicking assess scenario, it's running the models under the hood. It's it's bringing in all those geospatial data layers. Um, and we're using SNAP plus and a, a few other models to, to estimate these outputs at the watershed scale. So we have a couple of different ways to go through these different outputs. And they're in these different categories. Um, we have outputs related to yield, related to soil and nutrients and um, biodiversity. And we can look at them in terms of bar charts and we're gonna be comparing to a baseline and that's gonna be in orange and the transformation or the scenario that you created will be in blue. Um, so we show the bar charts first as kind of a graphical representation of the output. Um, and there's going to be two different ways of showing it. This first is by selection. And what that means is we are only just getting an average for the grid cells or the pixels of your watershed that you are transforming. And then secondly, if you scroll down, um, the other way of doing it is looking at these outputs at the entire watershed average scale. And so that is including all of the pixels that you have not transformed. Um, so it, it depends on which of these outputs you're thinking about. Some might be more appropriate at the by selection scale and others might be more appropriate at the watershed scale. So let's, let's go through um, each one of these and it's gonna be a little easier to do it at the tabular um, view. Uh, as we go one by one. 
So first we have yield, and we are putting this in units of tons of dry matter per acre per year. And again, that might not make a ton of sense for a corn and bean system. We typically think of yield in terms of bushels per acre per year. But what tons of dry matter per acre um, does is it, it you can then compare across these different systems, uh, just looking at yield in a common unit. And what we see here is that um, those transformed acres are actually higher in tons of dry matter yield um, compared to the corn and beans. But what you need to keep in mind there is we're only uh, taking into account the grain yield from the corn and beans. And so it's not the entire plant that we're converting to dry matter. Um, but still, the, the managed grazing system is, is a very productive system. And so it is on par or exceeds um, the yield that we would expect in some of these other systems if well managed. Um, we can also put that in terms of cost per ton of dry matter um, in terms of the production cost. And we see that it's just a lot lower with some of these default options that, we've, uh, that we have under the hood. Uh, it's just a lot less production cost uh, associated with well-managed grazing systems compared to these other uh, cropping systems that require nutrients and more inputs and more passes with machinery. Um, so that's just another uh, dimension that we want to include in the tool. The rest of these are going to be more related to the biophysical outcomes and we have erosion, which is coming from our SNAP Plus uh, model under the hood. And it's really a statistical model of SNAP Plus. Uh, what we did was we ended up running uh, tens of millions of simulations of SNAP Plus uh, under different conditions across the state. And we are harnessing that kind of library of simulation outputs. Um, and, and putting this under the hood so that we can run SNAP Plus in a very quick way. Um, so erosion is, is an output from SNAP Plus and soil conditioning index is something that we can estimate using this, uh, the same types of inputs. If you're not familiar with the soil conditioning index, um, it's a scale from negative two to two and the higher the number, the, the better the soil health or at least an indicator of soil health. Um, and then phosphorus loss is really what SNAP Plus is, is most um, known for in terms of outputs. And so we're including that. And that's both phosphorus loss at the edge of field scale. And then we also have a delivery to water term, which takes into account the position of different pixels uh, related to the distance along a path to a perennial water body. And so the longer distance you are from that perennial water body, the less relatively would be delivered to that stream because there's different losses along that path. Um, so both of those are, are just two different ways of looking at the phosphorus um, output from the model. And um, we also have nitrogen, and, and this is kind of the total loss to water, both surface and subsurface. And we can compare that baseline to the transformation. And for all three of those, um, phosphorus loss, even erosion um, and nitrogen, we're seeing much lower values for that managed grazing scenario. Um, and again, we're just looking at the pixels that were transformed. And so that's going to highlight that difference even more. Um, one other thing that SNAP Plus gives you is related to the water runoff or the storm water runoff. And we're just kind of taking a representative storm, three inch rainfall, and seeing what that would result in, in terms of runoff for the baseline scenario and the transformation scenario. Um, so that baseline, we're getting about an inch and a half of runoff from that three inch storm. And if we're converting that to well-managed grazing, we're almost cutting that in half um, down to 0.84. The, the last few 
I'll, I'll mention here are related to kind of biodiversity metrics. We have an insecticide index that's related to the, the typical amount of pesticides you would apply to some of the corn and bean rotations. Um, and then bird friendliness is going to be related to kind of how much grassland you have in your neighborhood um, as, as an indicator of, of bird habitat. So those are the, the different metrics or different outputs that we're providing for each of these scenarios. Um, and again, I walked you through the by selection values, but um, also want to note that you can look at this across the entire watershed. So if you remember, we only transformed, um, what was it about 15% of the watershed. And so what, when you look at it by watershed, you're accounting for the fact that a lot of the area is unchanged um, and is still set at kind of the baseline conditions. And it's just an example, we can look at phosphorus uh, delivery to water. And even though the pixels that we transformed are now much lower at about 0.15 pounds per acre per year, um, when we account for the entire watershed, like what does that mean at the outlet roughly of this watershed, or at least the what does it mean for the perennial water bodies in this watershed? Um, we're getting about one pound per acre per year. Um, of phosphorus under this scenario when we account for all of the land area. So it's a, it's a helpful way to kind of just put the, the different scenarios into a watershed context. Um, so these are all in terms of per acre, and you can also look at this in terms of the totals. Um, it just kind of depends on, on your interest. And then the last column is the relative change in terms of percentage between the baseline and the transformation. Um, so yeah, that's that's our set of outputs um, that we can provide from SmartScape. There are a few other ways that we can visualize all of this information. Um, and this would be a good opportunity to note that we're always interested in, in feedback and if there are other ways that you can um, envision showing this data. We would love to hear it. Um, but we're, we're showing a spider diagram of all the different variables um, shown in different dimensions. Um, but a lot of the times, you know, the tabular view is helpful if you're looking at all of these different components. But if you really want to zero in on erosion, for instance, maybe the bar chart would be a good place to go check. Um, and then finally, if you wanted to save this scenario output, you can click print PDF and you can save and download uh, a PDF of all of these different graphics. Um, so that's the, the broad overview of the, the tool and the different outputs. And I'm gonna close out of this and just show a few more things related to uh, setting up a scenario and uh, you can fine tune the selection of the land area uh, in different ways. So what we're going to do next is we're going to stick with cash grain, um, our, our corn and bean system and continuous corn, but we're only going to do that on land that is higher slope. And so this is a fairly flat part of the landscape. So I'm guessing that even at 5%, yeah, we're not getting much land. So I'm going to bring this down to maybe 3% and above. And you can even fine tune that a bit more and ask the question, okay, what if we transformed only the acres that are greater than 3% slope and also within 5,000 feet of a perennial water body. Uh, actually, that's about the same. Maybe we'll have to go down a little bit more. Yeah, so that removed some areas. So really what I'm trying to do here is I'm targeting some of the areas that maybe are more susceptible 
to erosion or phosphorus loss. And again, the, the, the real um, value of this tool is that we can play a lot of these what-if scenarios um, quickly and get results um, in almost a real-time way. Um, the other two selection options are related to the different categories that the USDA provides for land classification. And so we might just be interested in converting land that's um, just not as productive um, from a soil property standpoint. And so that would be the place that you would do that. Um, so I'm just going to collapse these down. And uh, you'll notice now that when we institute those slope and distance to stream selection criteria, that the work area has now shrunk down to about 3,600 uh, acres. Uh, and so that's going to be uh, you know, a fair amount less than what we started with, but it's a little bit more selective towards the acres that are potentially more susceptible to losing these nutrients in soil. So I'm just going to add a little note. Um, so these are steeper slopes and close to water. So that's going to be my first transformation. And the other thing I want to show you is that we can actually add in additional transformations at the same time. So I'm just looking at continuous corn and cash grain right now. But say I want to, at the same time, I'm going to add another transformation. And I'm going to name it right away. I'm just going to say, OK, let's put all of the dairy rotations. Um, let's add cover crops to those. So let's first make sure that we're selecting dairy rotation at the top. So that's a lot of acres. We're that's about 34% of the work area is in some kind of dairy rotation. So if we if we do some kind of transformation on those acres, we might be um, resulting in a substantial change at the watershed scale. Um, so let's go ahead and set that transformation. And again, the default is at pasture, but we we want to keep this at a dairy rotation. And now you see a couple of new options to choose from. And we're going to say that this is a, a grazed cover crop and it's interseeded. So it's it's got a longer uh, time to grow. And we're going to have this go into a no-till system. And yeah, we're going to be farming along the contour. I'm going to leave that as yes, even though this part of the state is, again, relatively flat. Um, these different amounts for nitrogen manure and nitrogen fertilizer, you can hover over and get some more information. Essentially, what we're trying to do here, though, is scale the amount of nitrogen um, applied to these fields or these pixels based on recommendations. And so if we do 100% of recommendations, that's for, from fertilizer or sorry, from manure we would want this to be at 100. Um, and then maybe there's a little bit of starter nitrogen that gets applied to these fields. So that's what these numbers are going to indicate. Um, and assuming a, a constant manure phosphorus to nitrogen ratio, we can automatically calculate how much phosphorus we're going to be putting on these fields. Um, if we're going to be applying manure at 100% of recommendations for nitrogen but we won't add any additional phosphorus fertilizer. So, you know, if, if you're concerned about all of that, just you're, you're pretty good to stick with the defaults, but again, you're welcome to play around with the different numbers if you're interested. Um, the, the last thing I'll show on this transformation is that um, the adoption rate can be changed. And what this means is we're essentially going to apply a multiplier um, by the the, the impact of this transformation by a multiplier. So say only 50% of these um, grid cells are actually going to be transformed. And so we'll call that a 50% adoption rate. Okay, so I'm going to click Save. 
And now we've got our two separate transformations and we can select them and kind of remind ourselves of what each of them are. And then before I click assess scenario, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the base assumptions real quick. And again, you don't have to, to mess around with this. I just wanna be clear about the assumptions under the hood for the baseline. What this means is that for all cropland management, we are assuming that there's no existing cover crops and that the tillage is consistent across all these cropping systems and it's a, a spring cultivation. Um, if you wanted to change that, if you think that the baseline is something different on average, you can feel free to adjust this. Um, and then we also have the contour off for the baseline. Again, it's not going to have that much of a difference in this part of the state, but if you go to the driftless area, steeper regions, you might want to play around with that assumption. And then again, you're seeing some of these uh, nitrogen and phosphorus inputs um, in the same kind of format that I explained in the, in, earlier in the transformation. So we're, we're adding a little bit more nitrogen than is recommended for uh, in, in terms of manure, which is resulting in a, a lot more phosphorus being applied uh, than is uh, recommended. So I'm going to click out of that. And now I'll click on assess scenario. And what we're going to be doing is combining those two different transformations and seeing their, their outcomes um, at these two different watersheds. And so it, it might act a little bit slower under the hood um, because it's combining a couple of, of different model results all together. Uh, but all in all, we expect these, these simulations to hopefully take less than 20, 30 seconds for you on your computer. Um, so we still see, you know, a pretty uh, strong decline in erosion, maybe not quite as much as that first scenario where we were um, changing everything to manage grazing. Um, but if we go back to the tabular view, um, you know, since we are working on a lot more acreage, um, we would expect there to be maybe a little bit more of a decline in the watershed um, phosphorus uh, delivery. And it looks like we're roughly on par uh, to the scenario that we we previously created. So I'm going to leave it at that. And hopefully this was a useful demonstration of, of some of the things that Smartscape can provide. Um, Please let us know if you have questions, if you start playing around with the tool, and um, we, we hope to, to keep updating. Okay, thanks so much for your time.